Episode 48, Alone Together? The Temptation of a Uniform One morning, Ningxi descended the stairs to witness a scene she hadn't seen in a long time. Little Bun and Big Bun were sitting across from each other at the dining table, one with an icy expression, the other with a small icy expression, creating a tense atmosphere. What's going on? It had been a while since father and son had argued. What's going on with you two? Ningxi asked suspiciously. Upon hearing Ningxi's voice, Little Bun immediately saw her as a lifesaver, and like a drowning man grabbing a lifeline, he hugged her leg and then watched Louis Tingxiao warily, as if Louis Tingxiao were about to sell him. Ningxi comforted Little Treasure with a hug and then looked at Louis Tingxiao. Louis Tingxiao, what's going on? Louis Tingxiao raised his eyes. I'm planning to send him to my parents' place for a few days. They haven't seen him in a long time and miss him. Oh, I see. Ningxi nodded in understanding. Little Bun, upon hearing this, became anxious. Large teardrops formed in his big watery eyes. So, Ningxi immediately softened and scratched her head, looking at Louis Tingxiao. Is there no other way? Louis Tingxiao glanced at her. There is. Let my parents come and stay for a few days. Well, let's just send Little Treasure over. Ningxi decisively said. Sorry, Little Bun, Auntie has no choice. Little Treasure was instantly struck a blow and displayed a small expression of being unloved and uncared for. He ran upstairs and hid in his room. Uh? Ningxi dryly laughed. I'll go talk to him. Sure. Upstairs, Ningxi knocked on Little Treasure's door. Baby, can you open the door for Auntie? No response from inside. Are you really ignoring me? Still no response. Seems like he's really angry. Ningxi sighed. She had no choice but to go downstairs and walk towards the door. Louis Tingxiao saw her and didn't even lift his head. Don't climb by hand. Let the butler prepare a ladder for you. Upon hearing this, Ningxi almost stumbled and fell. Was this guy a mind reader? How did he know she was planning to climb the wall and sneak in? Damn. Over these days, she found that Louis Tingxiao was getting to know her better. Many times, with just a look or a small gesture, he knew what she wanted to do next. Five minutes later, Ningxi climbed the ladder and successfully sneaked into Little Treasure's room. The little guy rushed over like a tearful puppy, wearing an expression of grievance. Just now, when there was no response from outside the room, he thought Ningxi really didn't want him anymore. Ningxi hugged Little Bun with affection. Baby, Auntie is always on your side. It's just that, for this matter, Auntie really thinks you should go. Think about it, your grandparents love you so much but they're afraid to come and see you just to avoid relocating. Little Treasure drooped his head, and after a while, he picked up a writing board and wrote two words, together. It meant he wanted Ningxi to go with him. Ningxi awkwardly cleared her throat. Well, that's not possible. How could she go to Louis Tingxiao's parents at a time like this? Because Andy is about to start work, and I'm afraid I won't have time, okay? Ningxi found a good excuse and then hurriedly coaxed, but Auntie can accompany you to go there with your dad. Be good. Little treasure, you're already a five-year-old little man, and you've improved so much in this time. You're getting better and better at everything. You can definitely handle this small matter, right? Ning Shi held Little Bun and comforted him with soft words and cuddles for nearly half an hour. In the end, the little guy finally relented. The old mansion of the Louis family was halfway up the mountain, occupying a large area of wooded mountains. It took more than 20 minutes to drive from the main gate to the residence, surrounded by lush trees, creating a beautiful scenery. It was said to be a place where dragon veins were located, a feng shui treasure in the imperial city. Thanks to Little Treasure, she had broadened her horizons. Looking through the car window, Ningxi saw Louis's elderly couple waiting at the gate eagerly, with expressions similar to grandparents who doted on their grandson. Ningxi patted the little bundle in her arms. Go on. Don't forget what Andy told you. Good luck. Seeing Ning Shi's encouraging and expectant eyes, Little Bun nodded firmly and, led by Louis Tingxiao, stepped out of the car. After seeing their precious grandson, the elderly couple wore faces full of delight and hurriedly greeted them. Louis's old lady was so excited that her eyes were moist. She looked at her eldest son beside her and complained, You brat, for your sake, we endured not seeing our little treasure for months. And in the end, you still haven't won over my daughter-in-law. Louis Tingxiao lightly coughed, indicating that there was someone in the car behind them, and at this distance, Ningxi might still hear. In reality, Ningxi did hear it. 
Taking advantage of the fact that the person outside the car couldn't see the person inside, Ning Shi directly pressed her ear to the car window to eavesdrop on what they were saying. She happened to hear Louis's old lady's words. Louis's old lady got excited, oh my. Did my daughter-in-law come too? Ask her to get out and let us see her. Mom. Louis Tingxiao looked helpless. She's shy. Don't scare her. Ning Shi nodded repeatedly, yes, I'm shy, please don't call me out. Fortunately, at this moment, a sentence from Louis's old man shifted everyone's attention. What is little treasure writing? Louis's old man asked suspiciously. When Louis's old lady heard her old man's words, she also found that little treasure was burying his head and writing something. After a moment, little treasure lifted the writing board, and his black, gem-like eyes looked at his grandparents brightly. The writing board read, Grandpa, Grandma, little treasure misses you very much. After Louis's old man and Louis's old lady read the words on the writing board, they looked at each other in shock. Then, the two of them turned red-eyed at the same time. Louis's old lady looked at her husband in disbelief. Did, did I read it wrong? Did little treasure just call me grandma? Although it wasn't a genuine call, this was the first time little treasure had addressed her as grandma. In the past, he had simply ignored them or even rejected them. He also called grandpa. Louis's old man added solemnly and proudly. He also said he misses us. Louis's old lady couldn't hold back any longer. She hugged little treasure and cried, Grandma sweetheart. Do you know how happy grandma is? Louis's old man sighed, then looked at his eldest son with a serious expression. Ting Xiao, the girl you like is good. She has taught little treasure well. He only knew that little treasure had become much more cheerful and willing to go out. He never expected little treasure's progress to be so significant. It was truly a pleasant surprise. Yes, she's very good. Louis Tingxiao glanced in the direction of the car behind him, his gaze lacking tenderness. Louis's old man patted his shoulder, emphasizing with great emphasis, young man, keep it up. The best things naturally require more effort. We will support you unconditionally. With the assistance of Grandpa Louis, Grandma Louis, and Louis Tingxiao, Ning Shi had successfully completed the glorious task of all Louis family members supporting. Inside the car, after Louis Tingxiao bid farewell to his parents and little treasure and walked back towards the car, Ning Shi quickly sat upright, pretending that she hadn't heard anything. On the way back, Louis Tingxiao suddenly asked, What are you planning to do today? Today? Ning Shi was dumbfounded when she heard this question. Right, she didn't need to accompany little treasure today, and it was Saturday, so Louis Tingxiao didn't have to work either. Did that mean they would spend the whole day together? just the two of them, alone, in the house? Ning Shi realized she was falling into one pit after another and was about to fall. At this moment, her phone rang. Ning Shi picked up her phone and glanced at it. Her eyes narrowed slightly. Chang Li? Why was she calling? Ning Shi answered the call with a surprised tone, Oh, Manager Chang, the busy person who manages thousands of things actually has time to call me in person. Hearing the four words, manages thousands of things, Chang Li almost bit her gums until they bled. In the past, Ning Shuolua had been busy every day, so she was naturally busy too. However, since the incident, Ning Shuolua's activities, endorsements, movies, and TV shows had all plummeted. Not only that, but many of the endorsement companies she had signed with before demanded compensation. Starlight also asked Ning Shuolua to keep a low profile for a while until the incident blew over. Chang Li was going to have a hard time in the next six months. Chang Li grumbled without a good tone, I'm informing you now, move out immediately. You've breached the contract with the company. Do you still want to occupy the company's apartment? Renting it out in such a location would at least bring in over a thousand a month. In a place like the Imperial City, was it worth bragging about a monthly rent of over a thousand? Ning Shi didn't have time to waste with her. She casually said, got it. If there's nothing else, I'll hang up. Before she could hang up, Chang Li aggressively accused her, Ning Shi, ask yourself, hasn't the company treated you well enough? Now that you've breached the contract with the company, do you still want to take advantage of the company's apartment? The company even arranged accommodation for an unknown newcomer like you. Many young artists can't get any work for months. At least you've always had something to do. Ning Shi clicked her tongue, Manager Chang has become increasingly skillful in distorting the truth. If it makes sense, why don't you argue with reason? Chang Li was immediately choked up. She did indeed say these things before, and the result was that she was scolded by her friends. 
Chong Li didn't have a good tone as she sneered, Ning Shi, your skill in distorting black and white is getting better and better. If it's so reasonable, why don't you argue with reason? Ning Shi shrugged, looked at Louis Tingxiao beside her, and said, Now, there's something to do today. What? Louis Tingxiao asked. Just now, Chong Li called to say that Starlight is taking back the apartment they arranged for me. My things are still there. So, I need to move. All right, let's go, Louis Tingxiao nodded and drove in the direction of her apartment. Ning Shi thought she had avoided a disaster, but seeing this, she became anxious. I'll go by myself. I have a lot of stuff, so I'll contact a moving company to send a truck to help me move. No problem, it can fit, Louis Tingxiao said. Ning Shi thought, although your car is quite spacious, how could it fit so much? Am I a magician pulling things out of a hat? However, Louis Tingxiao looked confident, and she didn't want to argue, so she let him drive to the apartment. Well, moving together was a safer option. At least, it wouldn't have anything to do with ambiguous atmospheres. Arriving at the apartment, Ning Shi opened the door. Since no one had been living there for a long time, a layer of dust had settled, and the window, blown open by the wind, had let in a pile of fallen leaves. A chilly autumn wind blew in through the window, and Louis Tingxiao's slender figure stood at the entrance, his usually cold gaze carrying a hint of warmth as it slowly swept across every corner of the room. What's wrong? Ning Shi looked at him in confusion. Nothing. Louis Tingxiao retracted his gaze. Although this was a shabby apartment arranged by Starlight, it held precious memories for them. Well, she could consider buying the house later. Is there anything you need me to do? Louis Tingxiao asked. Ning Shi scratched her head, found a large empty box, and pointed to a tall bookshelf. You're tall, can you help me put the books from the bookshelf into this box? Sure. Louis Tingxiao rolled up his sleeves, ready to start. Ning Shi watched him, dressed in expensive clothes, and touched her forehead in frustration. She quickly said, wait, wait for me. She picked out a doctor's white coat from somewhere and stood in front of him, saying, take off your jacket and put this on. It's for dust protection. Louis Tingxiao took off his jacket, looking surprised at the white coat. Where did this come from? Costume. There was a crew that couldn't afford the costumes for the extras, so I bought one myself. Ning Shi explained as she helped him put it on. Luckily, it's loose enough. After saying that, she saw Louis Tingxiao stunned and couldn't help but gulp. His face was too astonishingly handsome in the white coat. The temptation of a uniform. Damn it, not even moving houses is safe. What's wrong? Ning Shi quickly shook her head to come back to her senses. It's nothing, let's get started. I'll go organize my clothes. Okay. Louis Tingxiao nodded, his expression understanding, as he watched the girl's retreating figure, and then began packing the books on the shelf. Louis Tingxiao's movements seemed leisurely, but in reality, he was quick and efficient. In no time, the shelf was almost neatly packed. As he continued moving, a photo accidentally fell out from a Shakespeare collection book. Louis Tingxiao picked it up casually. The photo showed a group of young people, all dressed in a very punk and heavy metal style. Ning Shi was in the middle, with very short hair, wearing a black motorcycle suit, and had a carefree smile on her face, looking like a handsome young man. Her arm was casually resting on the shoulder of a man. Because he was lighting a lighter with his head turned to the side, and the lighting was dim, his side profile was blurry and couldn't be seen clearly. His intuition told him, this person was the one Ning she had mentioned before, the one she knew was dangerous but still believed he would never harm her. Louis Tingxiao stared at the man's profile for a long time, his mind filled with a fleeting thought. However, it passed too quickly for him to grasp. Why did he feel that this person gave him a somewhat familiar feeling? Could it be someone he knew? Louis Tingxiao, I'm almost done on my end. Are you okay? Ning Shi dragged a large suitcase and turned to ask. Yeah, I'm fine, Louis Tingxiao calmly placed the photo back. Ten minutes later, Ning Shi stood downstairs with bags and luggage. Then, she finally understood why Louis Tingxiao was so confident that everything would fit. A stretched Lincoln was quietly parked there. Hee <laughs> hee. This ruthless world of the nouveau riche. Ning Shi quickly lowered her hat, carefully and quickly placed everything in the car, and then urged the driver to start driving. Because everything happened suddenly, she didn't have time to change. If she was photographed like this, it would be a major news. Gigi had instructed her to keep a low profile during this period. She had already gained enough attention, and being too prominent might lead to public backlash. 
It seemed that Louis Tingxiao sensed her concern and spoke, don't worry, the reporters know the license plate number. The implication was that they absolutely wouldn't dare to provoke the owner of this car. Uh, okay. She was overthinking it. The great demon king did everything seamlessly. On the way to the new apartment, Louis Tingxiao suddenly stopped her. Ning Shi. Ning Shi, who was absent-mindedly thinking about things, suddenly looked up. Huh? What's wrong? Supporting his forehead, Louis Tingxiao looked at her with profound eyes. I seem to remember you saying that if I wanted to pursue someone, you could teach me. Ning Shi's mind buzzed. She cursed silently and then forced a smile. Did, did I say that? I don't think so. He he he. You did. You even said you'd provide full guidance. On the day we went to your apartment to get the seasoning, you also picked up two packages. One was a birthday gift from your ex-boyfriend, and you said his way of coaxing girls was too clumsy, asking me not to learn from him. Louis Tingxiao accurately recalled all the details to remind her. Ning Shi wanted to slap herself. How could she talk so fast? She had dug her own grave. So, do you currently have a girl you want to pursue? Ning Shi could only grit her teeth and ask. Yeah. Louis Tingxiao no dead. His eyes, filled with stars, looked at her as if he was looking at the whole world. So, teach me. Damn it. Teach what? If you just look at any girl with those eyes, they'd all swoon and throw themselves at you. What else do you need? But she had no choice. She could only clear her throat and put on an expression of ignorance. There's a popular saying, if she's inexperienced, show her the world, if she's experienced, take her on a merry-go-round. The idea is to tailor your approach. I don't know what type of girl you like. He paused for a moment. After some thought, Louis Tingxiao's eyes, filled with floating mist, softened, and he said, she's worldly wise yet innocent, unruly but kind and gentle. She has experienced a lot, yet she still maintains a pure heart. She's the best girl I've ever seen.